Ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. The Beef Quality Assurance Program provides guidelines for low-stress cattle handling. We'll share some tips that can help you every day. And now, a special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen with host Kevin Oxner. Hello and welcome to a special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Oxner. Thanks for joining us. If you're in the cattle business, caring for your animals is job one. To help get that job done, one of the outstanding resources for cattlemen and women is the Beef Quality Assurance Program, or BQA. BQA is a national program that provides guidelines for beef cattle production. As an educating program, BQA helps producers identify management processes that can be improved. And it's founded on the idea that production practices can ultimately influence consumer acceptance of beef. So today we're going to focus on beef quality assurance and in particular, low stress cattle handling. To begin, let's hear what some leading voices in the beef industry have to say about beef quality assurance. Our industry is driven by consumers. And if we don't satisfy the consumer, our industry is in a lot of trouble. And we all have got to understand that, and that is why BQA, or Beef Quality Assurance, is so important. We've got to get the understanding of the consumer that we are doing the right thing. My family has been certified um, in the Beef Quality Assurance program for years, um, and even the kids, because they have to do that in 4-H in Nebraska to be able to show. So they get their certification there. My husband and I get our certification every two years um, to keep current. And so. You know, I value it in a number of ways. One, as, as a Beef Council member and as a producer in general, I want every person to have a great eating experience every time they are served beef or every time they prepare beef for themselves. And part of that is making sure that, that the quality is there, that we, we handled the animals properly. The other thing is to assure them that we are in fact doing what we say we do. And the record keeping side of Beef Quality Assurance is every bit as important as the on-farm practices. BQA is a very important program and we've been doing it in our family and on our, on our ranch uh, not long after the beginning of the BQA program. I go through and I have family meetings and get all of our people, even those members that are not on the ranch, we have them go through the BQA training so when they come out and help us when we're working cattle, uh, when we're processing cattle uh, and they understand what we're doing, they understand the industry and they understand how to help me on the ranch do the job right and the people that buy our cattle years ago started asking are you BQA trained and I know they had gone through the process so this way we can tell the consumer that we're handling the cattle right we're giving vaccines right and responsibly we're using uh, our antibiotics with the veterinarian and using them responsibly and working cattle responsibly. Still ahead on this special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. So what we're dealing with when we're moving livestock is applying pressure. And if you apply the pressure properly, animals seem to like it and respond well to it. And if you apply the pressure wrong, they learn to fight it or hide from it. Bulls don't take pressure good. We'll look at BQA approved livestock handling practices as Kurt Pate gives us a demonstration of how to move and work with bulls. Stay with us, we'll have more right after this. You're watching NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen on RFD-TV. Your herd, your business, your family. You've always protected what matters most so you know how important vaccinations are for healthy cattle. And with Vista vaccines from Merck Animal Health, you know you're covered. No other vaccine works like Vista. Only Vista gives you complete dual action pneumonia protection and complete one dose fetal protection for the entire pregnancy. Protect what matters most. Talk to your veterinarian or animal health supplier about Vista. The Case IH Summer Sales Event is going on now, meaning you can turn the heat into red hot savings. That's because all Farmall and Maxim Series tractors, along with our complete line of hay tools, are available with 0% financing for 60 months. But hurry, because while the Summer Sales Event is just warming up, it only lasts until September 30th, 2014. For more information, visit your local Case IH dealer or go to caseih.com slash special offers.
Welcome back. No doubt, getting cattle to move and go where you want them to can be a challenge. But there are some proven methods that can make that challenge much more manageable for both the people and the animals. Let's hear what stockmanship expert Kurt Pate has to say about the value and the technique of low-stress cattle handling. So when we're dealing and talking about effective stockmanship, if you break it down to its component parts, you're really working with the animal's mind, their brain. And the way to communicate with the brain, the best way is through vision. We can use touch and we can use sound, but out in the open in a big area, the way the bull sees us and how we are approaching his pressure zone is the most important point. So when I want to communicate with these bulls, the worst thing I can do is walk around behind them because that will cause their vision or their eyes to turn and look at me. And that will put them in the exact opposite direction I want them to go. So as I walk to their, to move them out of this pen, I'm gonna be real conscious of where their eye looks at me and where it points their nose. And I wanna point their nose right out this gate. So as I approach here, I step in and I approach these bulls in a way that causes them to look right towards the gate. So I have to get down behind this guy a little bit more. And as he comes across, I'm gonna step over here. And as we, prepare them, I'll get them all prepared to go, trying to position myself where they're all pointed towards the gate, and I will send them right through the gate. So I'm way up on their side, and now I have control of their flows going through the gate. I can tell each one of them to go through there nice and orderly. I can step back and take the pressure off. I can step in towards his tail to bring his nose across. This last one, I can walk right by him. As soon as I get by the balance point, I can turn in, step in behind, and flow him right through the gate. What I had was complete control of these bulls' mind because I was in the right position. If you get around behind them, you have no control of their mind or their speed. So what we're dealing with when we're moving livestock is applying pressure. And if you apply the pressure properly, animals seem to like it and respond well to it. And if you apply the pressure wrong, they learn to fight it or hide from it. Bulls don't take pressure good. They like good pressure, but they don't like bad pressure. So as I move these bulls, it's real important to pressure them in the proper way so they keep getting better, or you'll have lots of trouble with your bulls. And your bulls are really your report card on how good your cattle handling is. So at first I look at the big picture here, I see all of them. And the first thing I want to do is just start lining them out, getting them, not putting too much pressure on, but getting them to change their mind and point them all in the same direction. Once they all get head and tail the same direction, now they kind of want to go. And all I have to do is step in, pressure him, straighten his nose, step back, ask this one to come forward, step forward. All I'm doing is apply, applying pressure to each bull that needs it at the right time. So I'll send him on, send him on, now right here I've got to start widening out to point them towards my gate. As I widen out, I'll turn their heads towards the gate, I'll put some pressure right on this bull here, I'll step up to him, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the pressure on him all the way through. He's going to push the other bull through the gate. Now this positions me here to apply pressure, take it off. I'll open the gap for this bull. He's not going, so I'll move in, apply pressure in the right spot, send him. Now I'm going to send him pretty hard, so he pushes his way through the gate. This little guy right here, I'm going to walk right directly by him. As soon as he gets by the breaking point, I'll just go with him. What this does, I'm out to the side, he can see me, and it causes him to push his way through that gate where the other bull's pressure can't push him back. So one of the real stressful tasks that we do with any animals in the beef industry is sorting. That's, that can put more pressure on than anything. But with bulls, it's not only the pressure of the handler, but the pressure of the other bulls too. So I like to sort bulls in a bigger pen. I actually like to sort all cattle in a bigger pen, but this will be a good way to show that these bulls can be sorted in a bigger area where they don't feel so confined, and it'll just work out safer and better for everybody. 
So as I, the first thing I want to do is, again, get them pointed towards the gate. So I position myself to get things lined out. And as soon as we get them positioned, now I can decide, I can let him go, because they know how to go by me. I'll keep this calf here, this, I'll keep this younger one. Send him to the back. I'd like to keep this first, first one here, so I'll, I'll bring him right on around, come to the back. So if I've got him under control, I can position him and put him anywhere I want. I'll send this guy by, or back to the back, and I'll just keep positioning myself to where I can put myself in the proper place to get this older bull to come on by. I'll just walk with him. As I stop here, all the bulls are looking at me and wanting to go. This way they, get, they stay good at getting sorted or worked, but I got my sort done real low stress. Don't forget, the Beef Quality Assurance Program provides guidelines and training about best practices in beef production. You can get BQA certified, and to start the process, just visit the website bqa.org. We'll have more on this special edition of NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman right after this. To truck guys, the truck is everything. And when you put them in charge of making an unbeatable truck, good things happen. This is the Ram 1500, the 2014 Motor Trend Truck of the Year. And first ever back-to-back -back winner. Guts, glory, Ram. Welcome back. Bulls can be highly dangerous animals, and care should be taken whenever handling them. Let's head to Texas, where stockmanship expert Kurt Pate shares with us some of the best ways to handle bulls safely. So the main two terms with low-stress livestock handling or effective stockmanship are balance point and flight zone. And those are real good terms, but let's expand on them just a little bit. When we talk about flight zone, what we want to do is get the animal to move in a, in a manner that's not fleeing, but working away from our pressure. So we'll find out that space that we need to be away from the animal that determines that nice movement. It could be a quarter of a mile away, or it could be three feet away, depending on the temperament of the animal. The next thing is balance point, and where we position ourselves on that animal to make him go and do what we want. If we pay attention to how we position ourselves, and what I try to do is point my animal's nose to where I want him to go. So as I walk to this bull, I'll step around here and I'll try to draw his eye back to me or else I'll have to get up in front to where he looks at me. He should turn and look at me with both eyes here. If I can get in a position, I'll ask him to look at me by backing up. And now I should be able to come around and send him right back towards the gate. So here, now I'm putting pressure in front of the balance point, which causes him to stop or turn away. I'll widen out here, which should cause him to slow down. I'm getting farther away from the flight zone and turn towards the gate. Now I move back into the pressure zone or the flight zone. Now I move back out because I'm trying to point his nose right at my gate. Now I'll keep the pressure on just enough. And as I, as I step out wider here, I'm going to be able to push his eye right through that gate. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Now I'll ask him to come down the fence line. So I step in behind him here, and I want him to stop. So I'll walk up in front of the, the balance point and stop him. I'm going to ask him to wait there. I'll shut my gate. 
So I'm real careful about how I go about this. Good. So as I walk up here, I can ask him to look at me with both eyes by my position. I'll go here. When he looks at me with two eyes, he has depth perception. He knows how far away I am from him, and he likes me right here. From this position, I, I can ask him to walk straight forward by just walking across the balance point. And if I want to slow him down or stop him, all I have to do is walk up, draw away a little bit, ask him again to look at me with both eyes. I'll step here, here, here. Good, there he goes. As soon as he does, I step back and take some pressure off. This teaches him what I want. Now I want him to turn to his left. So I step right across here, pressure into that eye, put pressure on in front of the balance point, and ask him to move to his left. I want him to turn to the right. Now here I can step down behind him. And ask him to look across this way. I might even have to put my hand on him. And I'll ask him to turn and look back at me over here. He's going ahead and switch across this way. That's fine. I'll draw him to me. I want him to go right back. Good. I'll step forward. I want him to stop. I walk up his eye. I pressure to his eye. Watch his front foot. I'll let it st there. Now I know I can take the pressure off and release it. So the bull tells me what I need to do, but I have to re keep repositioning myself in the proper place in the balance point and our flight zone to get these things to work. So when we're working with these guys to put them up a chute or somewhere, I'd like to try to keep them from, I'd try to pick out the bulls that want to fight and don't want to fight and kind of put them in separate. You can't always guess that, but a lot of times you can tell by the way they look. So I, I'll pick these two here. I'll try to take two and leave this guy because he seems to want to fight a little bit. Now once I put the pressure on here, I don't take it off. I think so many people when they're working with bulls, they take the pressure off. I'm putting quite a bit of pressure on this bull. So uh, low stress handling or Effective stockmanship is not about no pressure, it's about the right kind of pressure. Now here I'll just, I'll just wait it out. I open my gate so if I need to I'll be safe. Now I didn't put any pressure on, I'll wait and I'll get myself safe. Now as I come around here, this is dangerous business, so this is, but this is the real world. So right here, I have to get myself in a safe spot, and I'll let this bull load the other bull. Now there's no way I should get in there, so I'm just going to let him do the work for me. As he comes across here, I'll just wait it out. And he should send that bull right on up in the chute. So, with that situation, I actually let the fighting bulls work themselves into the chute. To find out more about low stress livestock handling and the Beef Quality Assurance Program, visit bqa.org. Or you can review any of our stories by visiting our website. That's cattlemanacattlemen.org. Stay with us. We'll be right back. When it comes to your land, it pays to be smart. At New Holland, smart means giving you a wide range of options to fit your needs, like smooth cutting, flood-free conditioning, and versatility. Smart means putting more hay in the bale and leaving less in the field. It also means providing exceptional after-sale support and growing a legacy that goes far beyond equipment. That's New Holland Smart. Visit your local New Holland dealer today. Well, I think a rancher has to be a steward of the land. There's nobody else that can take care of land better than a rancher. When we switched over to the uh, Perina products, it was a step in the right direction. The difference we see in the cattle is the consistency of their nutrition. The cattle hold their condition a lot better throughout the whole year. It does make a difference that we can see, day in and day out.
Whether you're designing a new cattle working facility or trying to manage an existing one, it's important to make sure the facility you have best meets the needs of the cattle. Let's head to Texas where stockmanship expert Dr. Ron Gill shares some facility design tips with us. When we talk about facility design, there's a lot of different uh, images brought to people's mind. Uh, there's a lot of different designs out there. There's a lot of constraints in where facilities can be built. And regardless of what those constraints are, there's some basic principles of, of behavior that we need to keep in mind. Most old corrals are much like this one we're standing in today. Uh, this has been pieced together at least four or five different times, so the pieces don't always fit together exactly as they should, but you can once again try to design it where you have some flow and ability to move cattle from one area to the other pretty easily. Uh, this one happens to have an alleyway in, on one side of it. A lot of people do not have that. Some people really use an alleyway quite a bit. Uh, this one actually has a small tub system in it uh, that's not particularly designed the way I think a tub should be. We've adapted it and adopted some other principles and design behind it that makes it actually work fairly well. So it, the, the main thing is to try to figure out how you can make things work regardless of what your setup is. And then if you have some real trouble spots, understand how cattle are thinking, behaving, read what they're doing, and make adjustments. And that's the thing that I really encourage people to do is try to let their cattle tell them where they have a problem. In a lot of facilities and a lot of people's mind, they want to really stack an alleyway or whatever loads or what their source of cattle coming into a sweep or a crowd area. You really want to keep this area where it's not overcrowded, where you can get cattle to move very easily. Uh, I try to put maybe enough cattle in here for about three different loads going into that uh, squeeze chute. That way I can keep motion going in the cattle and not have to have a lot of them sitting in the back of the alleyway, getting additional stress on them that I don't particularly want them to have. So we keep a limited number in here. We may warehouse some back in the alleyway here, and that'd be something as this needs more cattle. We step to them, get them to come back past us into this area. That just trains them for the next segment as well. So everything's designed where you step past cattle and draw them forward, refill your alleyway or your loading area and don't put too many cattle there. It's better to leave them in a corral out back and go put more in as you need them. In this particular setup and regardless whether it's this one or something else, I like the idea we bring cattle into this alleyway and into this section here where we're standing. And that they go to the far end, their natural inclination then is going to be to come back. And so what we do from that standpoint, we can open this gate as we bring cattle in. Bring this one around and then I'll push cattle away from me to that end, let them start coming around. And as they come around, then I'm working on the side and I can push on the cattle and send them into this, what, it's not really a bud box, but kind of a return box behind this uh, sweep system. So the cattle would come into here. The idea behind this would come into here, would actually close the gate behind us, but as the cattle come in, they're gonna to come to this end, and you want this end to open, so they've got daylight to go to. The other sides can be solid if you want them to be. But the cattle will then want to circle around and come back out, and at that point in time, we've got the gate behind them that we closed, and whoever's brought them in here then can open this sweep gate, or should already have it open, to where the cattle can come around and into this sweep tub. So as the cattle go to the far end, I like to open the gate from this side. Some people like to work it from the other side. I personally like to work it from down here where I can push on an eye, get the cattle to come out of that corner. As they come around, I can step to their side, draw their eye on around this corner. The trick to making this work really smooth is once they start around here, don't just worry about the ones in the back and getting them all in here. As the front comes around, I'll step right to this pivot post put pressure on them. Now if the cattle are really wild or something and you haven't got them where they handle really good, you may can do this from the outside as well. But in this scenario, I want to put a push on the cattle and, and get them started down that chute. This design is not what we'd like for it to be. This should come off 
and go straight for at least two body lengths. That allows the cattle to see an opening. As they come around this corner, that looks like a solid wall to them. Once they get started, it's fine, but getting them started can be a little difficult. So once again, if you're gonna redesign it, go straight. Once the cattle go down the crowd alley, whoever's working on the outside or if you're working by yourself, you then can go to the outside, come from the front to the back to get the cattle to move forward. Same thing we've been doing out in the pasture, same thing we've been doing in the corral. So we use the same signals in each segment of this deal, trying to work from the side, not from the behind, draw the cattle forward, put pressure on them and get them to flow themselves through a system. We'll have some expert advice on managing your tools and your animals at the working shoot when we come back. Stay with us. This isn't a job, it's a calling. Your hard work helps feed the world. Being linked to those who care for the land is our calling. For more than 175 years, John Deere has been a proud partner of the cattle business. That's why we bring you special NCBA member discounts, so you can get the right equipment. Strong, rugged, versatile, and ready to work hard. Talk to your John Deere dealer to learn more about your NCBA member discounts. John Deere, committed to the land, committed to your success. To stay up to date on beef industry news and the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, check out BeefUSA.org. You'll find news on both the Federation of State Beef Councils and the work of NCBA on Capitol Hill. Plus, link to NCBA programs like the blog, Beltway Beef, updates on the Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show, and the latest from NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Connect today at BeefUSA.org. Welcome back. One of the important factors in protecting animal health is correctly giving injections and taking care in how you manage your tools and your animal health products when you're working shoot side. We turn again to Dr. Ron Gill for some tips and ideas on working with your tools and your cattle at the shoot. When we look at the different tools that are available and the, the scenarios where a lot of us work that would be open air, uh, not in buildings in the southern tier of states. The northern states might have covers over their facilities, but very often we have our equipment exposed to the elements, whether it be sunlight, whether it be uh, heat or cold. Uh, in some areas the cold is just as damaging or more so than heat would be. But we need to think about the different types of products that we're gonna use. There are a lot of different syringes. A lot of people might not use anything but these disposable syringes. They work very effectively, but I encourage everybody to use them as a single dose delivery system and not try to use multiple doses out of one, because if you're off on one animal, you'll be off on another one. So once again, they work good for single dose, which hardly anybody uses them for that. That's why we don't normally recommend we use anything more than a two or five cc syringe uh, for administering products to cattle. Then we have these, uh, a lot of people call pistol grip or multi-dose syringes. They come in either uh, 25 mil or 50 mil designs. The 50 mil design, if you're using 5 cc products, we normally recommend them. If you're using 2 cc products, we normally recommend the 25 dose uh, syringes. We don't, the reason for that is we don't want the vaccine to be in the syringe that long. The more it's in the syringe, the more it's exposed to different elements, whether it be sunlight, heat, or cold. And if we're doing two cc products, we have to process 25 animals before we have to refill this syringe. And a lot of people like that, but there's some downside to it that your vaccine may not be as effective if you do that. The other thing, most cattlemen are not prone to change a syringe very often. We recommend we change at least every 10 head. And if you're using a syringe, it'll get you to go through 25 you'll normally go through 25 before you change. 
So these will at least get you to change every time you fill your syringe, and that's a really good practice and protocol to have is every time somebody goes back into a vaccine bottle, they change the needle on the syringe. So that'd be the appropriate way to do that. Now you notice this syringe has somewhat of a clear barrel, a little older design. This one has more of an opaque barrel and it will keep some of the ultraviolet light out. But a lot of people are mistaken to thinking that's safe because the heat and cold will still damage vaccine if left out in it. Sunlight, not so bad. But once again, use those uh, as they should be as well. We now have some syringes such as this where we actually can attach the bottle to the outside of the syringe. They're very uh, handy, easy to use. Your vaccine is always there. One of the issues I have with these is if, if you set it down, sometimes you can get an air pocket and it's very difficult to ever get the air pocket out of one of these syringes without wasting vaccine. The other thing, this can be broken as you go in and out of a chute, breaking the neck off of it. And if you don't have some spares, then you're out of business for the day. So always have backups for these. Another one on a similar uh, concept are these that have hoses. This is a, a preferred method for a lot of people where the hose you know, attaches directly to the syringe and then the other end to the bottle. The problem with that is the hose. That hose can expose vac vaccine to sunlight and expose it to more of the elements, particularly if it's cold, I would not use one of these if it's below freezing. Uh, I keep mentioning freezing is more detrimental than uh, heat because if even on a killed vaccine, if it gets too cold and freezes that cell in there, it will rupture and render the vaccine ineffective and in some cases even toxic. So we have to be very careful about freezing our vaccine, whether it be in our syringes or processing area or shoot side. I know a lot of places in some of the colder areas will actually have the vaccine freeze in the syringe. In the southern tier states, we wor worry more about heat, but we can also use a, a cooler to keep things warm. And so sometimes we don't think about using it for both. I always like to go to the corral with a cooler with my vaccine in it. Uh, as you open the top on that, I always want to see cool packs, unless it's in really cold weather, then you wouldn't need that. I also, if I have a big enough cooler, I will put my syringes, particularly in the heat, in with a cool pack on the way to process cattle. The reason I do that, if you've ever seen what some people do, they'll throw these up on the dash of the pickup as they go to process cattle. They pull them off the dash after they have everything gathered and they're really hot. And uh, that can actually destroy some of the vaccine on the first draw as you pull it in there. So anything that comes in contact with that vaccine that's too excessive in heat can cause damage. So if you can, keep these at least cooled off as you go to the processing area. Have your vaccine in a what I'd call a storage cooler. This would be what I'd call a working cooler. I come up with this idea many years ago because I got tired of taking the lid off a cooler as I was trying to process cattle at the chute. Very simple. You just cut holes in the side of it and you can stick your syringe in it. That way it's readily available as you need to to get your syringe and go process cattle. Now let's talk a little bit about what the procedures would be as we're processing an animal through the chute. We should always make sure we're prepared. Very often I see everybody get in such a hurry, they'll load the chute and then go to doing all this stuff in preparation. Make sure you're ready to start processing cattle before you start loading the chute. Once we are ready, we want to bring the cattle in as quiet as possible. Once again, step down their side, pull them forward. Like cattle in the self-catch head gate, or if you have somebody helping you, that works great. I like to let the cattle come in. If they will, step back. Squeeze the cattle down, and that gives a very good open area on this side of the neck. Take your syringe, and as you come out of the box, that's why I like this cooler. You can pull that syringe out very easily. Come to the neck, and I like to tint the skin. Go in through the side of the tent. You, once again, try to pull the skin onto the needle here so you're not jobbing the needle at yourself. Once the, it's under the skin, you can tell it's free. Then you can deliver your dose. 
If you do it with a good sharp needle, the animal rarely reacts once the needle goes in them. They're still quite ready for the next animal to come in. Once you're through with that, you can put your syringe back in there until you're ready for the next animal. If you have cattle running at shoot speed in a processing area at a feedlot or a receiving yard, you're probably not going to need this because you're going so fast it really won't matter. But most cow-calf operations will slow down enough at some point in time they'll need to store their syringes in some uh, type of cooler or apparatus like that. Once they're done, we're then ready to release the cattle. We'd like for it to be where they can come straight out so they're not going to make a sharp turn when they first come out the chute. Once you do that, you're ready for the next one. Step down the chute, run your hand down the back if they're a little balking a little bit. Put a little touch on them. And if cattle won't go forward into the self cap, very often just giving them a, that little bit of time will allow them to do that. Once they set back, their head's a little more secure and you're ready to process the next one. If it's an intermuscular injection, you want to go straight into this muscle area in the center of the neck deliver your dose, come straight out. That area right below the ligament of the neck and above the spine and the lower part of the neck is all muscle tissue and that's where all of our intramuscular shots should go. But if you're not doing it one or two things through them, you can go pretty fast as you're processing your cup. To find out more about smart shoot side protocols and the Beef Quality Assurance Program, visit BQA.org. We'll have more right after this. As dependable as the sunrise, in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life. It's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do. Every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. Hi there, I'm Joey. And I'm Rory, and welcome to our farm outside Nashville, Tennessee. When we go to work, whether it's on tour or here at home, we wear the West. That's right, where it's that perfect snap shirt or that perfect pair of boots. When you wear Roper, you wear the West. Learn more about us, Joey and Rory, and about Roper Western Wear at eroper.com. Telling the truth and being real And feeding my family a home-cooked meal That's important to me That's important to me and Planting the garden and watching it grow Welcome back. Often one of the tougher days on a cattle operation is when it's time to work a big group of cattle through a chute. It can be stressful both on the people and on the animals. But with the right stockmanship skills, working cattle can be a whole lot easier. We have more on that from stockmanship expert Dr. Ron Gill in Texas. As you start to bring cattle into an alleyway or the next corral, whatever it might be, the best thing to do is push them away, once again, from where you want them to go, get your movement started, and bring them to forward. This particular design is similar to what a lot of people have done for a long time, and they try to angle a fence uh, to where they can funnel the cattle into this area. What it actually does, though, is kind of prohibit the handler from being where he needs to be when the cattle start coming around. But that angle keeps you from being up at the front putting pressure on the cattle you'd like to see. This one is not a severe angle, so it's not too bad. But once again, it, it does kind of limit. I'd rather have square pins 
than I would have one at an angle coming into an alleyway. This is another different situation because we have to go around a 90 degree turn coming into this alleyway and send the cattle up. So we don't bring too many at a time because they'll wind up balked at some point and then you lose your motion and movement going on up. So I try to fill the front section and then come in and fill behind them so we don't have too many cattle in the alleyway. So now I'm just gonna go toward these heifers. Once again, I have to get some movement in them so I might as well get it away from them and get them positioned where they need to go. Once I get some of them started around, and hopefully I can put enough pressure on them to go on in the alleyway. Once again, I'm just gonna put pressure, step back, let some more flow. If I wanna stop the amount I have in there at one time, then I can take this group on up. If you had enough people helping you, somebody could come behind you and fill the rest of the alleyway. And working an alleyway, you wanna kind of work it like a dog a border collie might, go back and forth across if you're working by yourself. And once you get the cattle up here, they're then quiet and ready to go through the processing area. It's interesting when you do that, look behind us, we have cattle actually f filling into the alleyway behind us when nobody has asked them to come. All right, as we are ready to reload the sweep tub and crowd alley, we don't want to use the sweep tub or a bud box or any other crowding area as a place to warehouse cattle. It's a flow through part of the system. It allows, the sweep tub allows you to use the gate to go ahead and push some cattle around that don't want to flow through. But in this scenario, we're not going to put anything in there until we're ready for them to go into the chute or into the lead up to the chute. So now we're gonna do the same thing we've been doing out in the pasture, in the corrals. I'm gonna go from here to the cattle, push them away from them, get some motion and flow started in the cattle. So as I step to them, they're gonna start moving away from me. I don't wanna hit them with this gate, so I'm gonna give them a little time to come out of that corner. Once we get the flow started, we wouldn't even have to open or close that gate every time, but once again, as I step to them, I won't get flow started. Try to bring about five at a time on these size of cattle. I can step forward, close my gate. As the cattle move forward, then I'm gonna push this gate toward them. They'll start coming around. Put pressure on the cattle right here to get my flow started. Then I can bring the others to them. But we can do all that without any noise, any pressure, any hot shots, anything we can get our flow started through our chute. I also notice I didn't use the crowd gate or the sweep tub at all. All we did was use it to position the cattle to go in the lead up to the chute. A lot of times in systems with a sweep tub, we'll have cattle that, and we won't have a return box or something like that, so we'll just put cattle into the sweep tub. And if the person that's working the sweep tub gate stays back here behind them, he's actually drawing their attention away from the opening. The best way to do that is whoever puts the cattle in the sweep tub to close the gate and leave it, then let whoever's in front walk down the side and get some motion started in these cattle. This is very good representation. It takes a little more time to get cattle to flow out of one of these than it would if we actually set it up right and didn't use it to hold cattle as they come through. But even though it's a little slower, the cattle still float out of the tub when we use our body position. All right, we're ready for more cattle to come into the sweep tub and swing this gate away. Now, I'm not going to let the cattle just come in right now. I'm not set up really to do that, to get my flow like I'd like it to be. Step to them. Let them come around. I'm going to let this one come with them. Once again, as we get them pushed to the other corner, then they'll be ready to set up and ready to come back around the gate. 
All right, once again, we want our cattle flowing through this system. We don't want to hold them in here, so I'll wait till they come to the back. Let them start working themselves out of that corner. Need to put pressure on the front to get my flow started. If I don't work on the front, these cattle won't start in this chute because it doesn't have the right angle. Once that happens, then I can bring more cattle. Now here I'm holding my position. You could do it with a gate, but why not do it with your body position? Once again, there's no stress on the cattle. All I do back up, let the rest of them come in. So if we can get establish that flow, position ourselves correctly, the cattle will learn how to work. When we come back, it's time for another visit with Baxter Black that you don't want to miss. Stay with us. Back on those Texas plains. Join us, Riders in the Sky, for sizzling hot San Antonio. It's the 2015 Cattle Industry Annual Convention and NCBA Trade Show. So Woo. grab the family and head to Texas for the latest cattle industry information and education, plus some fun and entertainment with us. <laughs> it's an event you won't want to miss. Join us in San Antonio, Texas, February 4th through February 7th. There's plenty more information at beefusa.org. And we'll be back on those Texas plains. See you there, saddle pals. <laughs> Tough trailers built for tough country. Big Bend Trailers manufactures a different kind of trailer. One that's built to put up with the rough conditions found on the ranch. Rugged built using heavy gauge powder coated steel and a two by four rectangle tube frame. There's a one inch gap between the side and floor. So there's no place for water or manure to accumulate and rust. Big Bend Trailers are loaded with standard features, a lever action hitch, a three-foot escape gate and a middle sorting gate, rhino lining along the front edges, and a receiver hitch to tow another trailer, chute, or other equipment. Tough and practical. That's Big Ben Trailers, designed and built by a working cattleman. You can rely on and trust Big Ben Trailers for their durability and convenient features. Reasonably priced for any rancher to afford. For a list of dealers and other design features, visit BigBenTrailers.com. Big Ben Trailers. Built Cattlemen Tough. With the advent of third party verification, cowmen are able to add value to their calves by preconditioning or early weaning or seek specialty markets like all natural, sugar free, or do source and age verification for export. Well, that's what IMI does. And it's not as expensive as you might think. Call them. What do you got to lose? I am I Global's Green Ear Tag. It's like having Honest Abe co sign your note. I am I Global.com. Let's face it, you don't think a lot about your trailer hitch. You use it and forget it. We understand. But at B&W, we think about it. Short nights, long hauls never-ending chores, the unthinkable. We think about it all, so you don't have to. B&W. Trusted. This is the story of a curious cow who lived on Mr. Marvin's farm in the kingdom of Kansas. Her name was Yvonne. Farmer Marv had a great, large, old-fashioned barn with a second-story hay mow, a high-pitched roof, and a rooster weather vane on the tallest peak. Yvonne was piddling around in the barnyard one fine day, doing her hooves and trying to find her cuticles and curling her switch. How did that rooster get up on top of the barn, she wondered. Well, said Peggy, her best hand friend, I suppose he walked. He couldn't fly, you know, because the Poultry Protection League made it illegal for us to fly higher than a chicken wire fence. Hmm, said Curious Cow as she wandered into the barn. Let's see. She walked to a steep set of wooden stairs. You can't go up there, said Friend Hen, because cows can't hop. 
I wonder, mused Yvonne, and she clattered up the steps like a mountain goat and then walked to an open door. Yvonne had never seen the farm from this high up. It was then that Farmer Marv came out. Yvonne saw his mouth making, oh! Yvonne and Peggy watched as the men built a long ramp out of plywood. What do you think that is for, wondered the curious cow. Maybe it's a ski jump for the Kansas Barnyard Olympics, suggested Peggy. Well, Peggy was wrong. It took two men to push and shove Yvonne to the door, over the edge, and down the slope. And when they tossed friend Hen out after her, she was heard to say, I can fly, I can... And that is the story of the curious cow, which unlike other fairy tales is true because I saw the video. This is Baxter Black and Mr. Marv from out there. Thanks, Baxter. There are many great reasons to become a member of NCBA, and one of them is the chance to read The National Cattleman. It's the official publication of NCBA and provides timely news and articles about the issues and events affecting the beef industry. And it includes a handy online version, which enables you to read the latest issue on the go. A subscription is included free of charge when you become a member of NCBA. Joining is easy. You can just give us a call at 1-866-USA-BEEF or visit us online at beefusa.org. Well, that's our time for this special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you right back here next week on RFD TV.